a gene is something that can be passed on. So think about it as like a token that your biology picks up and you will then pass that token to your next generation. An allele is an alternative form of gene that is given one by each parent. We both do, female, male, contribute to the child, but those Y-linked traits that tend to be assigned to generational curses only go from the man. So what's great here is that certain alleles, as we're going to go into, are actually able to break things. They're able to change things. They're able to actually change the way a gene is expressed. So instead of perhaps it being expressed as it might have been back in the days of the Nephilim, your allele gets in there and actually allows that child to break that generational pattern. When we look at epigenetics, epa just means outside or above. These are changes in the expression without it affecting the code or the structure. For example, two structures could look exactly the same if we were looking at them visibly, but one is going to express one way, the other one's going to express the other way. So epigenetics are going to affect a variety of things from physical symptoms to how we actually present to all different types of physical traits in our body. Genes can either be silenced, enhanced, or changed. There are a lot of theories on how this happens, but if we look at it from the spirit realm, our choices and our actions dictate whether we're silencing, enhancing, or changing. We quite literally can change the way our entire DNA is expressed. So when you choose to walk with God and with Jesus and you become baptized and you become a new creation, the Bible was being serious, literal. You actually are able to change the way your DNA is expressed. So no matter where you came from, no matter how corrupt the bloodline was, you now have changed DNA with which to walk out a very different life. But there's a caveat. You have to start to choose in line with the way your DNA was just changed. So let's say you have the structure of A. You become baptized. You become a new creation. You're now able to walk like a structure B. You have the ability. But if you don't make B decisions, you're going to default to A really quick because your body is built that way. So when we look at the Christian community as a whole, this idea of passivity or we already won, I'm already saved, Real quick, you go from having the capability, the capacity to live a life of B choices, but your body always defaults back to A. So perhaps your actual soul has received salvation, but you're still leading a life of corruption and sin that is going to have a ripple effect to your entire bloodline, your entire community. So you might be saving yourself Meanwhile, your actions to your children are turning them against God, and they already have that A DNA, so they're just going to be living an A DNA life. So this is a call to everyone. Every choice, every word, every reaction, every response, you got to choose B, even if you're saved, even if you're a new creation. You don't get a chance to be passive and go on cruise control. Just because we already won doesn't mean you don't have work to do. In the Bible, there are so many verses that talk about how the sins of the father will affect three to four generations. So I went down a variety of rabbit holes to see if I could find actual proof scientifically that this also matches with epigenetics. And guess what? It does. God never lets us down. Numbers 14, 18, the Lord is long suffering of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the sons. Remember, why linked only? Remember how it can't go to the women? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the sons to the third and fourth generation. This architecture goes throughout multiple books in the Bible, always this way to the third and fourth generation, to the third and fourth generation. And I thought that was pretty specific. So I found a study that was conducted at Washington State University, and I have it linked in the presentation. The sperm of a male offspring showed changes in DNA methylation that lasted for at least four generations. So when they went through this, and they were able to replicate it multiple times, and I think that language is interesting, at least four, which is another way of saying kind of like 
three to four, right? Like at least ish, right? Like kind of right in that range, not like definitively four. It's like at least four. I just find it interesting when science to this level, when they're so convinced that God isn't real and that the Bible's just like a bunch of hogwash mythology. I just wonder how they feel when they get to things like this. Like, do they just not know the words so they're not kind of like stopped in their tracks? Like, oh my God, I just proved a section of the Bible. And I think that's what they want, right? They want the science people that are going into these sort of academic positions to be so anti-God that they don't realize that they're about to figure out things that confirm God, right? They don't know what they're doing. And that's all by design. So I do believe that many of you have children that are being called into the sciences, like the true sciences that confirm God. That whole sector of our world has been damaged on purpose. If you go into scientific experimentation, right, and testing and the scientific method, you will prove God if you don't go in with blinders on.